we want to talk today about what we think is going to be a really interesting conversation that we're going to have with our members this year, which is about that intersection between um, the customer experience and creating a really great positive experience for the customers and um, being more inclusive and welcoming, following up on that idea, and what that means for the co-op and its role within the community. Um, so before I do that, though, NCG is kind of periodically known as, as like having the stats, and they're not always great stats. Like in the last couple of years especially, we've been sharing some data that's been hard for co-ops to see about what the competition is doing to us. So today I'm going to share some good news to kick things off with. And that good news is that in 2018, uh, the number of co-ops that were reporting growth uh, was higher than the previous three years that uh, following what, for many of you know, since 2014, incredible market pressure put to bear on our co-ops. A lot of co-ops really struggling in that space and really kind of seeing what we think is the beginning of a cool turnaround. I want to show you, just in case you, the, the green line here represents the number of co-ops reporting growth. The blue line is those that are reporting declines every year. But I'll show you the data a slightly different way because it really illustrates how after the low part at the end of 2016, we're really kind of seeing what is a real improvement in terms of our same store sales growth. And that's really exciting to see. That same store sales growth is really a great metric to understand how much capacity we have to be able to do amazing things in our communities, with our staff, uh, kind of fulfill our larger missions. So I wanted to share this great news with you. Uh, the primary reasons why we think this is happening, uh, we think there's, there's stronger management now. We think that those GMs who were able to weather the storm of the, the and GMs and, and finance managers, all the co-op leaders that were able to sort of weather the last five years have come out the other side just a lot more knowledgeable, a lot stronger, a lot more aware of what their co-op can and can't do in their communities. Um, at the same time, we've gotten much better in price perception. Uh, in fact, the number of, of, of shoppers who report that co-op price is a barrier actually declined. Uh, this year, and I think that's, we'll talk a little bit about what that's attributed to, but improved price perception is great. And then finally, um, I think one big key reason is psychologically, I think our co-ops are more willing to think of themselves as a competitor, not just sort of uh, a victim to the competition at large. Uh, that, that when a comp this all started, people would be like, oh, competition came in, we're just going to be negative sales growth for a while, there's not much we can do about it. And what I hear co-ops saying today is, well, if they're going to come into our market, they better know they're in for a fight, right? Like, we are going to fight for this. We have think, something that we want to protect. And I even hear uh, co-ops now saying, um, well, look, uh, not only are we going to defend our turf, we have something really great to offer. We're going to take their shoppers. We're going to take their sales. We're going to go after their market share because what we do matters, and we want to invite more into that. So all these different factors, I think there's plenty of other factors too, but those being really some of the main ones, I think, that have led to this change. While I'm sharing good news, I thought I'd share some more. We have some real reason to be optimistic these days. Um, the specter of e-commerce is really not playing out to be what it was imagined to be originally. Some of you might recall... Three or four years ago, there was a, a, a projection that by 2015, or by 2025, 20% uh, of all retail food would be coming from e-commerce. We're not even close to that. Uh, and it's not growing at nearly the rate that people projected. Um, not the rate comparable in other industries either. Um, and in fact, uh, it's really kind of stayed stagnant for the last couple of years at 2.5% of retail food sales. Um, and what that tells us, and some other data, um, the Shelby Report just published a data that said that even today, 87% of consumers would prefer to get their groceries in person at a neighborhood food store. And even within that, 81% of millennials would prefer to get their groceries at a, at a, in person at a neighborhood food store. The concept of, oh, we're keeping up with our competitors. Uh, our same store sales growth rate is right there with Sprouts. When we had access to Whole Foods data, we were actually beating them. It's one of the reasons why they were acquired by Amazon, is they didn't know what to do going forward, and, and so they had to change their model. We've improved our price perception. Uh, better use of co-op deals. We have the co-op basics program that came out, but your co-ops are also doing your own promotional programs, too, to supplement those programs, um, whether that's uh, expanding on the, the co-op basics concept, um, or whether it's a fresh deals program, we're offering customers more uh, nuance and more programs to help meet their pricing needs. Um, and it turns out that consumers, this idea of a neighborhood store is really resonant with consumers today. They're really excited by that. And 
Community orientation really matters to them today, too. All of this is great for us. All of this is great for us because it really enables us to, uh, in turn, understand what our consumers are looking for. And co-ops are really well positioned to deliver on all of these needs. Um, we have more research and more uh, information about what consumers want today than we ever have before. Um, I'll be sharing a little bit of a summary video of our consumer research later. Uh, but um, this idea that we're paying attention to what consumers want and willing to change has been part of the co-op culture for years. Um, that that co-ops have continually added new, to, uh, new uh, concepts to their mission. Originally, the first wave co-ops really out there to, to give access to food at an affordable price. And then in the 60s and 70s, that changing to um, giving uh, people access to, to natural and organic foods and, and unprocessed foods. And then we expanded the mission in the 90s to helping meet a variety of dietary needs and restrictions. Today, it's evolving again. We have to deliver on all the stuff before. Uh, affordability, natural and organic, uh, a diversity of food to meet a variety of diets. And on top of that today, consumers are also looking for something more. They're looking for an experience. They don't want it to just feel like a trip to a regular grocery store. They want to feel something that, that really connects them, whether it's connecting them to other shoppers, whether it's connecting them to the producers of the food, or whether it's connecting the co-op to other community institutions, that people are looking for more than just a shopping experience. They want a sense of connection. Again, we are more than able to meet that need uh, and, and pivot to produce that. Last year, we talked about what it means to um, think of the customer as the heart of the co-op. And we're going to continue with that this year because we think it's really important. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that you all or various audiences over the course of the year brought to that conversation. And the one I love the most is this idea that we as leaders at a co-op, whether it's formal leadership or informal leadership, our role ha isn't necessarily as we've maybe sometimes imagined to balance the needs of various stakeholder groups, but our role is to orient all of those stakeholder groups towards the customer. Because the customer is the reason why all of us are here and why all of us have a job, why we have customers for our products, those kind of things. That was, that, I thought that was a great concept. Um, understanding that we need access to more information about what our, our co what our customers are looking for. We heard that reflected earlier. I love this idea. So uh, some people came up with this notion that uh, we really have to work hard to make sure that the employees at our co-ops uh, understand that a customer is not a distraction from the real work. The customer is the real work. And, and it was fascinating. I, I asked a question after I heard this. I asked our Focus on Fresh conference, how many of you feel like you struggle with that dynamic? And almost everybody raised their hand. That sometimes it's just so easy to see my job is to put out product. The customer is a, is a diversion from that. Not only do we have to treat the customer as the reason why we're here and everything else in service to that, but it's up to us to express a gratitude to that customer for choosing co-op, to understand that they could go to a million other places. And that gratitude means a lot. So some really great uh, concepts here. Um, that came out of last year. What we want to add to it this year is this idea of, of making sure everybody is welcome. We've touched on this a little bit already today. But what we would really love to see is a, is a time when all of our customers are able to say, I am genuinely welcome here. Not just because you have the sign on the wall, but because you're, you as a business operate in a way that makes me feel welcome. Uh, that you have what I'm looking for. You're able to meet my needs as a grocery store, and you're able to make it easy for me to feed my family in that space. And that, again, this experiential concept, I enjoy being here. This is not just another errand for me. I look forward to coming to the co-op. I look forward to the connections that I experience there. Um, if we could get all of our shoppers to be able to genuinely say that and invite more shoppers into the, that experience, there's incredible potential there. Um, a lot of us are working on this in different ways. And I want to touch on that briefly because what one co-op is going to work on in this space might look very different from what another co-op is working on in this space. Clearly, co-ops across the country are all asking the question of what can we do to ensure that, uh, that our co-op's uh, racial and ethnic diversity matches the community around us, that we're realistic within that, that we've been really good at meeting the needs of a very small segment of the population for years. We need to expand on that, and we need to, be, uh, to, to make some inroads there. But co-ops are also, beyond ethnic and racial diversity, co-ops are thinking, what can we do to make ourselves a better shopping experience for families, uh, be more welcoming of children? 
a lot of a lot of co-ops they understand that there's a barrier there that they they're they're not seen as a family friendly place. Uh, some co-ops it's all about making sure that um, they're open to those for whom English is not their first language. So all of us are looking within the within the scope of our own markets. What can we do to be more inclusive, to be more open? And uh, it's really powerful work. We're really excited by that work, um, and we're excited by it because. We think that there's something really magical here at the nexus between customer experience and the inclusivity and our relationship with the larger community. That those co-ops that are able to guarantee that the customer is really the heart of their co-ops uh, and invite more into that experience are really well positioned to ensure that their co-op is the heart of the community and plays a larger role in the community and can make more connections, those connections that are so important to people today ensure that their co-op is seen as a community institution, not necessarily just a place where some people can go to get groceries, but a place that all of us can go and all of us can have needs met at. So there's so much to talk about in this space. We're really excited to launch this conversation here, see how this conversation evolves and changes over the course of the year. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about this concept of knowing what our customers are looking for, because last year that was a really resonating theme. A lot of people said, you know, well, we have these mechanisms for knowing what some of our members are looking for, but we really don't have data about what other people are looking for. And, and Sacramento Natural Foods Co-op, Briarpatch are both piloting this customer experience survey. And some of the things that come out of that have been really interesting. We're seeing the macro data come in from that. And some of the things that, that we've learned, for example, of those individuals who say that they did not, were not highly satisfied with their shopping trip, 40% said it's because they weren't able to find the items that they were looking for. Again, meeting that elementary need at the co-op level, that um, they're looking for certain items and we're out of stock. And if you look at the comments associated with that data, it's not like vendor out of stocks or distributor out of stocks, really. It's about the sort of staple foods that we need to have available. When you come in for your favorite loaf of bread and the co-op doesn't have it in stock that day, or there's no ripe bananas to take home, or um, you know, the boneless, skinless chicken breast is out of stock. Those kind of things, those staple items that people use, um, making sure that we're meeting those needs is really important to consumers for them to be able to think that we're really meeting their needs overall. Another really interesting tidbit and something that we can really make inroads on, um, for those people who weren't highly satisfied with their trip, 40% uh, reported that they were only greeted at, no, 60% reported that they were only greeted at the cashier, uh, at the cash register. That they went through the entire store and they didn't get an actual greeting or a welcome from anybody until they got to that part of the shopping trip. And that's something we can change. That's something that all of us can, can work and help our stakeholders understand we can change. Uh, another interesting piece is that, uh, again, a very large percent of the shoppers, I think 60%, said that when they needed help in the aisle, they couldn't find it. And the comments, again, very helpful in the space. It was, well, I saw some uh, set staff, but they seem so busy, right? Like, that's stuff that we can affect. That's stuff that we can change. So I really look forward to seeing what this information continues to show us over the year. Look forward to hearing how our conversation evolves based on your experiences at your individual co-ops. And I think we're going to queue up this, move, this, uh, this summary of our consumer research to come next. We, we um, conducted some consumer research uh, last year, five major markets, variety of different kinds of markets across the country. And we didn't just ask existing co-op shoppers what they thought of the co-op. We asked the friends of co-op shoppers and their neighbors what they thought of their experience with the co-op. And the information that we're getting from that is going to be very helpful for us to think about this topic on a broader level. Anyway, I really appreciate uh, you all being here and enjoying and participating in this conversation and looking forward to seeing how we can, uh, can advance this conversation in the months to come. Thank you.